Right, cut the music. We've got a special request before we get started on this week's episode of the What's Next podcast. We would love your help. If you have been enjoying these podcasts, please engage with some of our content. Leave a review on one of the podcasting platforms that you listen to this on. It all helps with the algorithmic tick tick that helps it go further up, up, so that more people can learn, learn from the stuff that we are putting out, out. So, even if it is just you sending one of these episodes to someone that you know that could do with listening to the What's Next podcast, we would really appreciate that. And without further ado, on today's episode of the What's Next podcast, Luke Kimmies and Philip Smith will be taking you through a couple of ways that you, yes you, the listeners, can get started with investing. <laughs> Good man. We're here. I wasn't sure. My if we... word, I'm just flabbergasted by that intro. And look, as Luke said, uh, a review, if that's too tedious to type, uh, we're big fans of the five stars. Just punch it. Because for you you listeners out there, you're part of something special here. We've actually just reached uh, inside the top 100 business podcasts of the world. <laughs> it might actually only be New Zealand, but we're going to say world because it yeah. sounds... Very serious. So it does. We don't take we'll ourselves take very seriously. Top one hundred. Is the certificate in the mail? Well, we're a little bit pissed off. It's not number one because we're one we'll get there. So, we'll get there. So these sorts of things, by engaging and review, leaving a review and helping and sharing them around, it will help us get further up that ladder, and that would actually mean a lot to us because we know, unlike a lot of people out there that might be putting out shit content, we're doing this for the purpose of helping uh, a lot of Kiwi business owners. Even wider than just our Well, they're own just clients. copying us, to be fair. Well, that'll come. Yeah. Tune into an earlier podcast on that one. But on today's topic, you know, how to get started on investing. Uh, Phil is jacked up. I think I might just wind you up and let you go. No, it's uh, the, the reason why we've chosen this is uh, a number of, uh, a couple of reasons is um, Shearsies, Hatch being spoken about. Lots of people are going, oh, you know, have you got Hatch? Have you got Shearsies? Oh, rah, 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 share market, blah, 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 blah. Uh, crypto, the old oh, yes. Bitcoin. C-bomb. Yep, and we thought, and I thought to myself, um, I would like to find out more. So I've been on a bit of an educational journey just to find out what's involved. Because young Luke here um, has been on his investing journey for quite a while. Uh, um, you're on Sharesies. Do you have Hatch? Yeah, I've got Hatch, here. Yeah. Hatch, you've got a self-managed KiwiSaver I've investment. Own, you've yeah. got a direct brokering account. Yeah. And TAB you're into account. the cryptos, and I was just about to mention the uh, your biggest account of all the TAB account. Yeah, I've got a TAB yeah. account. I think that's and which, my... which account's got the uh, the best returns? Uh, Would direct... it be the TAB one? Eh? No, my direct broking account. <laughs> yeah. Have to be my direct broking account. To be fair, uh, I think my love for the markets and stuff and investing came from economics in yes. in seventh form, and I, yeah. I I think this might be where my interest in gambling came from. Also, we are. Uh, we were tasked with finding a, a stock on the stock market and basically tracking it for the year for economics and learning mm-hmm. about it. And I think that's where I picked up some of the fundamentals. And it's that, interesting that, that, that could be what got me started. Gambling yeah. has uh, popped up mm. as part of our discussion to do with investing, and that's something that I wrote down when I was making some notes earlier, mm. uh, particularly around crypto, which we'll come to. Yes, gambling. We certainly will. Mm. It's just. Speculation for me is the same thing as gambling, mm-hmm. and the stock market seems to be a place where you are allowed not to call it gambling or speculation, yeah. but you call it investing. Mm. But given that I understand how gambling works and that industry probably a little bit more than most, I look at some of the things that are happening in terms of investing and go, "That's not investing; you're gambling. Like that's glorified gambling." But you just don't want to call it that because you would feel bad about saying that. Whereas I can stand back and say. I don't really care what people think. Um, that's that's the terminology I would give it. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll anyway, touch on that. So and also, look, we, had, we had a client last week who said yes. to us, oh, you know, I don't even know how to get started with investing, and so hence part of why we put yeah. this podcast together, because there'll be other people thinking the exact same thing. Sharesies, let's go. Right, so. Jump on, Sharesies, S-H-A-R-S. I think there's an E in there. Is there an E? S-I-E-S. Yeah. Shears Ease. Shears Ease. Yeah. Um, log in, register, pretty easy process. You've got to go through all this AML identification palaver. It's reasonably straightforward. At a minimum, you're going to need to know your full name, your driver's license, uh, a bank account number, and your IRD number. That reminds me, my driver's license has just expired. Has it? Yeah, I might go do that at lunch. 
Smart. So Shearsies, but what's Shearsies for for those that are completely unaware? So for those of you who are not aware, previously access to buy shares on the stock exchange. So we'll just talk about the New Zealand stock exchange, uh, the NZX, NZX, as it is as it is sometimes called. Yeah, has previously been the domain of the rich and famous or those with money, and you'd need a stock broker. Mm. So dudes that walk around in cooler suits than some old-school accountants are known to walk around in. Uh, and they drive fancier cars, not Volvos. They have RM Williams boots and wear the colour blue. The stockbrokers? Yes. Yeah, and probably never seen a farm in their life. Definitely not. <laughs> so these, these lads would help you buy, and lasses to be fair, uh, would help you buy these mysterious things called shares and companies. Well, Sharesies has come along. And made it accessible for the common man, where you can drop a bit of dough into the Shearsies bank account, and I can tell you from personal experience that you can drop it in, and within half an hour, that cash is in your Shearsies account ready to spend. Wow. Yeah, I I was surprised at how quick it was. Uh, Ends up in what they call your wallet, and then you type in what you want to uh, go shopping for, and they've got the little search thing up there, and you can search by... Uh, industry type or company name or whatever it is and then the shopping list of companies turn up and you go I'll take a punt on that one thank you very much (laughs) and um, you put it in your basket and go thank you very much I'll I'll take 500 of those and you can set limits so we won't get into the limits and stuff I don't think in terms of setting buy and sell bits and pieces to manage risk but you basically tell it look I want to buy 500 bucks of this or 1000 or 5000 of this it will send the order off to the market, and uh, in a little while it'll come back with a confirmation. Hey, presto! That cash has been turned into shares, and then by the end of the day's trading, uh, you'll probably find you've lost yourself, yeah, maybe a percent, two percent, five percent. If it's a really shit day, you might have lost eight or ten percent. And the beauty of shares is that you can buy such a low amount, right? I think yep. does it even start at a dollar? Is that right? Or you can buy a fraction of a share, or yeah, so. I don't know what the minimum spend is on buying a share, but you can buy fractional shares. So normally when you go and if you're using a platform like Direct Brokering, which is online access to the share market direct for the punter rather than going through um, picking up a phone and talking to a share broker and going, hey, I want to buy 50000 of Fisher & Paykel and I don't want to spend any more than you know whatever their current share price is. Um, you can just go, well, I'll buy 500 bucks worth and... You know, in the past, you could only get whole shares. Well, shares these lets you get fractions of shares, which is quite cool. So you get more bang for your buck, I suppose. Mm. And that's uh, what's made it so popular, I think, is that people have realised, oh, I don't have to have huge amounts of money no. to be able to get involved. And I think that's particularly important for the US Stock Exchange, uh, which shares does provide access to, because the likes of uh, their share market darlings being... Amazon, Facebook, Tesla, and Tesla and uh, Alphabet, the Ooh. parent company of Google. Oh, yeah, okay, hey, okay. Hey. Uh, you know, or Berkshire Hathaway. Oh, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. <laughs> Warren's yeah. on the buffet. His, he, he is, um, he's on the blue chip buffet, that man. Yeah. Because the shares in one of those companies, 340,000 US dollars. For a share. For one share. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, that's a small <laughs> fraction when you're investing two hundred. <laughs> wow, he he's a phenomenon, isn't he? Yeah, uh, and he's there was another class of share that they have, and I think they were uh, at a steal for fifty something thousand US dollars. So shares is if you're just really getting started and want to sort of set yourself up and basically give yourself instant access to be able to buy. Uh, shares into some of the biggest and best companies in New Zealand and also America is what Phil's telling us and perhaps Australia in time maybe. Yes, I did read as part of the research because the Australian Stock Exchange excites me a little bit more than the New Zealand Stock Exchange because there's access to companies like our very own Zero, uh, which I'd like to buy shares in. It's still a little bit dark that I didn't get in at $2, but look, that's a story for another day. Um you know, the likes of Afterpay and those other financial services companies, some of their mineral companies, you know, there's a bit more depth and exposure over there. But Sharesies, I do see, have hired somebody or are on the hunt for somebody in Australia to look at opening up their platform over there. For those of you who are listening 
that have uh, brothers, sisters, whānau, friends in Australia, there is any somewhat equivalent platform over there called Superhero, I believe. Superhero. Superhero Superhero.com.au. It appears to be on the face of it somewhat similar to Shares These. Obviously, I couldn't register because I'm not an Australian. So we... But stay tuned. A zero, uh, just for those listening, is $130 Australian per share at the moment. Fucking hell. (laughs) Down from... um, down from 130 100, Australian. Yeah, down from 155 back in mid January. So you actually, you know, if you want to go shopping, mate, then you could grab yourself a couple of stocks. Okay, so Jeepers. so if you, I mean, if you've used Shearsies yourself, you'll know that it's very, very simple to use. Um, and yeah, I, I use it as well. I don't use it for my bigger purchases. I still no. stick to direct broking. Mm. If basically I buy shares with an amount over five thousand dollars, being fully transparent, I don't know. I just made that figure up in my head as to why I stick to that. But I've brought shares <laughs> and sharesies with um, you know a thousand dollars at a time and things like that. And mm. I will set up basically. I, I use my sharesies account almost as my rainy day fund mm-hmm. um, plus some longer term smaller investments so what I mean by that is if I was to have to have my teeth fixed next week and it was going to cost me four grand I would pull my money out of sharesies and I would use that because I don't want to have four grand sitting in the bank because the way I look at it is that it's um, that's not a good place to store your money when interest is so oh, low that's yeah. how that's I look smart. at the world and, and I guess Maybe another reason for the contrast between direct brokering online versus sharesies would be brokerage fees. Yes. So to do a trade on a platform like direct brokering, uh, it's fifteen dollars a trade, is it? Yeah, I did one the other day for five grand, and it cost me forty five dollars. Forty five. Forty five for the wow. five. Yeah, and then it will cost me another forty five to sell as so, well. Yeah. So you're, so you're going to need to make fifty bucks. Yeah. On that. A hundred, yeah, hundred dollars basically, or Sorry, ninety, yeah. yeah, ninety. My maths is terrible. <laughs> Shock. And you, you have to factor that in because fees are one of the things that can really crush investment. So if you want to be day trading and buying and selling, your fees will clean you up if you're just trading on, um, you know, small amounts like that. Yeah, each you need day. to be. You need to have big brass balls dealing yeah. with some huge dollar values yeah. to compensate for what they're going to take. In, so uh, in fees, but compare that to sharesies. Their fees are negligible. Pretty small, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, the trades that I did the other day, it was that they weren't big at all, uh, and it was only a few bucks, I think. Yeah. I, I might pull it up. It was certainly less than 15. It, they're all very transparent on their website. But, you know, the beauty is they um, you can convert your Kiwi dollars into US dollars. Uh, given the exchange rate at the moment between the Kiwi and the US, probably a smart time to do it because it's Freaking rocking it up. Mm. Uh, New Zealand economy is strong. Um, hold it in there. Buy your stocks in, in US dollars. Uh, they pay your divvies to your sharesies account, and from there you'll be able to either withdraw it or spend it on some more shares. Yeah. Um, I've got a $300 transaction from a share I bought the other day, and it cost me $1.50 to buy that. And I think I did uh, another one. I'll find that just because I know it was a thousand dollars. The thousand dollar one cost me five dollars. So, yeah, probably cheaper than direct broking. But I yeah. like to sort of separate those out because it's a different type of investment for me. Usually, when I'm buying via direct broking, I'm buying a bit longer term. So. Um, you know, just to go back a couple of steps because you might be going, well, hey, all good and well to start a sharesies account, but what do I invest into? Well, look, it's not really for us to sit here and tell you what you should and shouldn't be buying, um, but a couple of very common or ways to make things simple because this is this is what sharesies have done. They've actually made accessing US dollars, they've made accessing shares very, very simple and US shares. So you're then tasked with, well, what do I buy? Now, you can go and ask people, and everyone will have an opinion on yeah, this going right. forward, just like we will. Oh, uh, buy Tesla. <laughs> or you can use your knowledge of the economy and the world and business that you have from looking at your own business and going, well, hey, which of my suppliers is doing really well? What can I see in my market for the next two years? Is there any companies in the New Zealand stock market that mirror or represent what will be happening uh, in terms of the economy that I believe is forthcoming. So you might be in construction and you know, okay, 
we are just needing to build 10,000 houses. Well, who supplies all of that material to build those? You know, those types of things. So don't overcomplicate it and think you need to be Could be the warehouse. There you go. You know, or are you starting to shop there all the time and your friends are talking about it too, you know? So try and stick to things that you know when you're getting started so that it's not so daunting to the point where you get paralysed by analysis paralysis, if they call it that, and then you stop and go, I'm not going to do this. Because there's no point setting up an account and then sitting there and not taking any action because no, exactly. we hear this all the time, oh, I set up one of those accounts. My, my suggested approach would be before getting the account, educate yourself. Love it. Yeah, go out and go on a journey of education about the markets and business. And, and if you've never been exposed to it in the past, you will learn a lot. And it's quite exciting, mm. really quite exciting. And to echo Luke's point, um, you, know, you, you really do have to understand the fundamentals behind a company and why you should invest in it rather than just going along with what's cool or popular at the moment. It, it, Tesla is the example. Everyone's climbed in on that because there's been a lot of chatter about it recently. Share price has gone through the roof. The professionals will probably look at it and go, the fundamentals don't stack up on Tesla. So mm-hmm. why invest it? The share price is over, overvalued. So then you get all these guys in the US that are, uh, are short-selling it, and that's where they'll make their money um, because they'll go, well, we know that the share price is overvalued and it's going to come back down uh, yeah. because it's just a popularity thing at the moment. And. I think, uh, as I just try to shut the doors from this helicopter coming out here... Is that your helicopter? Oh, I, I wish. Is that the one taking us to lunch? <laughs> yeah. Hey. The interesting thing about the is this overvalued conversation is that everybody has a different way to value something. Yes. So that one word can have a thousand different definitions. And then also we have to layer yeah. in the fact that we are living through a very historic time of history where we're at the lowest interest rates that we've seen for a very long time. So... Some of the reasons people are putting money into the share market are different to what they would traditionally be because they're just mm. buying them because they think the stock is val- undervalued. You've got guys like me who just said, I don't want to keep, keep my money in the bank. I'm just going to mm. put my safety money into the share market. When people would say, mate, you can't do that. That's risky. If that was six years ago and I was getting 4% interest on that, I might think, actually, I'd rather get the 4% play it safe. So you've got all this money flooding in that's now manipulating or changing how you can think about uh, overvaluing things and those types of things. So, you know, you might read an article and one person will say, Tesla's overvalued. Then you read another article and it says it's undervalued. And you're sitting there going, well, how the hell am I supposed to know? And the beauty of all this stuff is the answer is actually, you're not. You're not supposed to know. Yeah. But you need to know what to do when the shit hits the fan a little bit. And the other day, I mean, it wasn't really, well, it was the other day, one story, um, the whole market just shed itself, and I have no idea why. And I didn't want to go and look at any news because we know I'm, I'm off the news. Yep. And I saw my favorite bank, Heartland Bank, down 5%. First yep. thing I did, bang, I'll have five grand of that, thank you. Bingo. Purely because I know in my head there's no way this business is has just become one twentieth less than it was yesterday. Yeah, That drop was on the back of US stocks that day. Was it? Yeah. Perfect. Yep. So we're reacting to the US market, which I believe in my head, and I could be wrong, that's really, our our country isn't America, but we seem to react. As soon as they react, we react. Because that was uh, a day or two after I started my shares his portfolio, and I dumped some money and bought some shares. And I've only bought NZX at the moment. Um, oh, sorry, New Zealand listed shares. I haven't bought NZX, the company. Yeah. Um, and... Within two days, I was going backwards. I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. <laughs> you got I'm, another, I'm two thinking, days. Jim, my analysis here and my thoughts on the economy and where the world's going are completely yeah. fucking cooked. But, you know, I've, I've invested in the past and, I, and I've done reasonably well and I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. And I thought uh, I'll climb back in and, and just see what all the fuss is about with mm. shares. And, and lo and behold, I'm a week deep and uh, I'm up 2%. Good, man. So... Heartland bounced back because, yep, of course, that company still is the exact same as it was the day before. So you start to learn things like that and when to get in and when to get out, um, if you even want to get out. I'm not in the game of getting out because actually I'm investing. No, and I think that's a really important point to make as we're talking about investing and the very nature of investing is buy and hold. Yeah. If, if you're not buying and holding and you're buying and selling, you're a trader 
Yeah. And that's a completely different kettle of fish. Yeah. You're playing a, a game where lions are ready to chew you up and spit you out, so you better know where your exits are. And you better declare that shit in your tax return too. Yeah, different different kettle of fish. And I suspect if you're, you're doing that day trading stuff, you've probably got a TAB account as well because yeah. you are gambling. Now, well, they'll say, oh, I'm not into that. That's bad. Gambling's bad because it's very hard to get good at gambling. Only a 0.1% of people win in gambling, much like day trading. But at the moment, the percentage is probably a lot higher because everything thing just keeps seeming to go up so everyone thinks oh yeah I'm good at this mm. so we'll probably have a bit of that undone but um, going back to lockdown I was in Melbourne and I looked at the markets and I'm like oh my god it's, oh. it's coming pandemonium is here every single stock was just down just getting hammered uh, I'm looking at um, tourism holdings bang 30% of their bit, their company value gone in, in two hours um, off the back well before the government even announced that they were going to be locked down so the market knew before the people knew welcome to the real world team if you want to get into investing that's also how it works you can use the market to figure out what's happening uh, that is a time where you go bang I'm in am I in because when everyone's running you want to be running straight into fear but when everyone's again you're Zagging. I couldn't do it. I was like, shit, man, this is so scary. I don't know. And I had all this money ready to go for a crash or something happening. And I'm just like, oh, I just can't do it. Can't bring myself to do it. And so, like, even I knew what to do, but I just couldn't break the emotional back of just do it, mate, plow it in and just ride it out mm-hmm. because that is what we're told we should do. And of course, everything is just about recovered. That dropped. And so what I did do when I went investing later on with that money is I went and found the stocks that hadn't recovered back to their full business price that I believed were still the same business before COVID ah, and they would be in the future. And some, some gems there that are undervalued. Hey. Bingo. So that is how I assessed whether something was undervalued. So I can give you some of those. They were all Meridian, Mercury, Genesis, Heartland Bank, and every single one of them has Oof, now on. basically exceeded by a mile where they were. So I've not only got the gain of them getting better than the business they were prior to lockdown, mm. I've got their recovery too. So if you want to, uh, taking away from shares a little bit and coming back to the education point that I raised earlier, if you're unsure about this and you want to play, jump onto the NZX website. They have a virtual trading platform where they give you 50G. Oh, yeah. And you can sign up and go and spend it and you can Buy and it's only exposure to the New Zealand Stock Exchange, and you can buy and sell stocks until your heart is content, and it will at least, you know, provide some backup to the education. Nice. And to illustrate on Luke's point with um, what happened with the market last year, um, I jumped on the virtual trading thing of NZX in uh, August September, spent the fifty G quite easily. The strategy there was around, uh, at that point, transport and logistics and property stocks um, because I thought, you know, everyone's going to vacate property mm. commercially because it's this whole working from home bin. Property values will decrease, but long term they'll go back up. That was my play there. Uh, and fast forward to now, and the transport and logistics stocks have gone up. Last time I checked, 40%. Wow. Uh, the property stuff has gone up, although th- not that much. I've got a little bit of Air New Zealand and Auckland Airport in there just for shits and giggles. Uh, and I mean, they're, they're green, but it's nothing startling. But gee, the old likes of Freightways, Main Freight, and there's another one there, I think TIL or something like that. Uh, mental. Absolutely mental. And why it's important to just go back to fundamentals to actually start thinking about investing, because you might think, well, I'm just not interested in this stuff and I can't be bothered. Well, what is important to understand is that, I mean, this is very old data, and I know these stats won't be the same anymore, but they say 97% of people in the world will only have one source of income. 2% will learn to invest, and 1% of people will figure out how to build multiple streams of income into their life. Mm. Now, investing is the next step to get towards the 1% of having multiple streams of income because you start to get paid dividends from companies and stuff. So basically, data... You won't get many of those from your TAB account, (laughs) would you? (laughs) Data basically tells us that if you're not getting into investing, you're getting left behind as such. Mm. So that's why, you know, sometimes you'll hear Phil and I talk about, you know, people will say, well, cash is king. Yes, but often that's mistaken. Like cash flow is even more important. Mm. And at the moment, cash is kind of trash because it's not actually doing anything for you. 
And that is why investing, apart from giving you options, investing becomes so important in understanding these things. So, hey, you might decide, I'm not into this shit and I just don't care enough. That's cool. If that's the legacy you want to pass on to your kids and and teach them as well how to be poor, then that's a decision you have to live with. Cop that! And that is hard hitting. (laughs) Wow. Poor not only in a financial sense, but I think in an educational sense as well. Yeah. Because the um, accessing a platform like Sharesies and the education that you go on in terms of understanding economics more broadly and what's happening in the world and business mm. that you can then talk to your kids about is, oh, powerful. Exactly. And real, real I'm, powerful. Not, I'm not saying that to put people down. I'm just saying, like, people listening to this, they, they're obviously hungry to learn and to grow. And this is another area where you can learn about it quite quickly and not overcomplicated and set your future generations up to take advantage of it. It doesn't have to be you, you know. I said to my sister, I'm sorry, I'm not buying you any clothes and shit for your uh, baby. Yep. And my nephew, I'll buy you some shares in some of the companies that I think will help him pay for his oh, education by the time shit. he gets 18. You can't buy bonus bonds anymore, eh? They <laughs> no. Wound, they wound that thing up. And, you know, that's because I'm like, hey, I could give you the gift of these clothes that'll last three months or whatever, but I saw everyone else was doing that. I'm like, sister, I will use some of my knowledge to help um, yeah, that kid's going to be minted by the time he gets to eighteen. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, hopefully it all it all plays out well. But you know, that's the power and the value of actually understanding investing rather than just going, "No, I'm not into that. Who cares? That's for rich people." You know. And, and if it scares you to pick a particular company, because it can be a little bit daunting, because you're looking at it going, "Gee, I'm parting money." So the the thing with buying shares in a company is the company does not get the money. You are buying that share or the interest in that company from another person who doesn't want it anymore. Yeah. So Luke might have some shares in Sky City um, because he, I do. No, he, he no longer <laughs> wants to go there and he thinks, well, if I'm not going to go there and, and um, I- I invest my winnings, uh, I don't want to own a portion of it and, and get the return through the back door, so I'll sell it. And That's exactly it, what I brought them. And... <laughs> And, if me. And, I, and, and I'll I'll look and I'll go look. You know, fundamentally, I think Sky City stacks up, so I don't know why you're selling it, but I'll buy them off of you, uh, and we'll agree a price. We'll shake hands, and I will get your shares. Then I will get the right to turn up to the shareholders meeting, eat the sausage rolls, have the orange juice, and raise my hand on the voting matters, and then collect my dividend <laughs> when uh, the old Sky City decide that they're finally in a position to declare a dividend. Brilliant. Um, uh, if if that daunts you on partic- uh, picking a particular company, have a look at managed funds and ETFs. Oh yes, exchange traded funds. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where you get a little bit bit of diversity. So you can get an index track fund. So you might decide to go. Oh well, I, I quite like the manufacturing industry, so I want a a, a manufacturing indexed fund where they'll mm. pick top stocks in that sector, and then you go boom. I'll, I'll ride the wave of those ones, or you know, it gives you access to perhaps um, gold and silver without actually having to physically own the gold or silver. You can get one that is an ETF and electronic traded fund. Very, very smart, mate. Well, we're nearly a, a half an hour deep. There, we? We've got a number of things that we still need to get through. We were going to jump we, onto crypto, weren't we? Yeah, we'll get there. I'll just say Kiwi Saver as well is a very important. Thing for you, which we've spoken about previously, which by now surely you're in KiwiSaver. If you're not, if if, if you're not email. on KiwiSaver, I would echo Luke's point. You poor. Yes, it's, you're just you're just setting yourself up to fail. Yeah, it's it's three percent shouldn't be a huge sacrifice. No, and I, I personally I don't believe there should be any excuse for you to not be in KiwiSaver. I've I'm married with three kids and a mortgage, yeah, um, and, and I'm on KiwiSaver. The midi's on KiwiSaver. Mm-hmm. Um, The kids will be in there soon. Yep. Uh, We've gone down the pathway uh, controversially of not signing them up and getting the free government money and making them educate themselves and make their own financial decisions when they become old enough. Oh, wow. Okay. uh, I will educate them and then they can decide. Yeah, and, nice. and get the gains from, from that age. But, so Phil's uh, kids have all got crypto accounts. <laughs> um, and, and look, if, you, if you're sitting there going, oh, I know nothing about KiwiSaver and I don't know where to start, um, yeah, all good and well for you guys to say that, tell you what, drop me an email, luke at nextadvisory.nz. I'll put you in touch with the AFA that I deal with, good young guy. He can give you a hand. He can run you a free report of whether your KiwiSaver is set up perfectly for your risk profile and what you've got coming up in terms of buying a house or retiring. And we'll to niche that. this KiwiSaver chat down, 
the challenge for you listening is if you are in Kiwi Saver, which should be a hundred percent of you, check to see whether you are in a in a default fund. If you yeah. are in a default fund, you need to email Luke. Yeah, get out of your default fund. And if you don't know, the, the percentages, the data uh, coming out is the overwhelming. Um, I think it's thirty or forty percent of people that are in KiwiSaver have not picked a scheme, and a, the IRD, our mates at the government, have picked the scheme for you. Yeah. If you don't like that and you don't want that, you need to do something about it. I tell you right now, you don't encouraged. want that. No, fuck no. I had a, a general manager call me a couple of weeks ago, multi-million dollar business. He had no idea that he could move his fund into uh, a growth fund. He's not going to need it for over three decades. He said, I just had no idea. Thank you so much for what you guys were talking mm. about. I went and changed that. That could make a world of difference from Huge. his return and over 30 years. So don't feel like you need to know all this stuff. Just find people around you that know more than you. That is how you change your life. Now, Hatch, before we get into crypto, mate, Hatch. Hatch the, is the other one. Yeah, the uh, American-type version of shares is in that it it had American shares before shares did. So the reason I set up Hatch is because I wanted to buy some gold and silver ETFs, exchange traded funds, to track the price of gold and silver. Which I, are in the US, aren't they? Yeah, yep. I couldn't do that via um, uh, shares, so I set up a Hatch account. I don't use Hatch now other than for those because I right. can do, if I wanted to buy shares in, the, in America, I'd do it through... Um, Shearsy. So I'm not sure what their competitive advantage is or how they get people signing up for it, but they have got, I think, hundreds of millions of dollars of money gone through the platform. I think Shearsies have done over a billion dollars now. Really? Yeah. Um, but I don't know how that'll play out, but it's all it's all run by a Kiwi Before we wealth, get I think. Uh, a bit further on and into the investing thing, going on to something different like crypto, on the Shearsies thing, the one thing we haven't spoken about, have you sold shares and got the cash out of I Shearsies? I haven't. I haven't. But I did hear yesterday that uh, it's taken a couple of weeks for someone to get their funds from one of those, and I will get it right so I don't put... Just for, uh, to answer any questions that people might have if they're thinking, because we're talking about putting the money in and buying and collecting the dividend and a little bit of growth... If you're treating it like a bank account to try and get a return, uh, which I think is a really, really smart way of looking at it, actually. I've made more money on my shares account in the last week than I would have with the money in the bank uh, for a year. But, yeah. you know, I, I the, the opportunity cost of that is I could have used that money and put it off my mortgage because I do have a floating True. mortgage and I could have saved some interest. Yeah. So it's, you know, Wait, but I'd be missing out yeah, on the hatch, capital gain. Hatch has taken a week to give one of our clients their cash back. Really? So factor that in. I don't know because I haven't sold, so I won't uh, pass too much comment on how long it does take, but do your research on those things too. Yeah, so if, if you're picking up on Luke's point about using it like a bank account, which I think is a really smart strategy, um, particularly, you know, you might have $10,000 in there, and if you need, you know, like you say, off to the dentist and you've got to spend two grand, that's a great place to get the two grand from. You need to think about how long it's going to take to get the cash back. They're very quick to get the cash into the account, but uh, I don't know how long it takes to get back yeah, out. I'd imagine it's a bit harder. <laughs> yeah, shares is free the first month, okay. and then there is a monthly fee, and we were talking about that pre-pod, uh, about how that's charged, and it sounds like they just charge it to your wallet. Wallet, nice. Well, yeah, rather than signing it up to a uh, credit card, so they're, they're not having to pay any merchant fees, those boys. Of course, before we get into crypto, we will... Take this time to ask you the question, if you are so hell-bent on investing into other companies, we can only assume that your education budget is higher than your entertainment budget and you're already investing money into yourself and your own business, which will be the two greatest assets you will ever own in your lifetime. Oh, my word. Notice I didn't say your property would be your greatest asset. Hey, good man. <laughs> I, I was about to ask you what your uh, top picks for a stock would be and it Ooh. would just be yourself. Bingo, yeah. Wouldn't it? I mean, we're not here to call out uh, particular companies. Uh, I'm no investment advisor by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, but seriously, you know, you do want to be thinking about that because a lot of people get caught up in the FOMO. You know, two things drive mm. the market, fear and greed, mm. and they think, shit, I need to buy some of that because somebody else is and blah, blah, blah. Mate, what's happened to the retirement property stocks? Uh, just flatlining. Flatlining? Yeah. Because there was a piece that came out the other week about that might need more regulation, so I was curious to see oh, whether that uh, impacted the share price of those. Yeah. Actually, Arvita's just recovered. I'm just about break even on Arvita again. I just put some money into Ryman the other day. Those guys are doing a bond issue. Yes. Are you yeah. climbing in? Nah. No? Nah. 
I big, looked at it. Big, did you? Yeah. Big bond oh. van. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, the returns on it look fantastic. Yeah. And I think it's secured. Yeah. Oh. All, yeah. All they're doing is replacing bank debt with uh, uh, bonds. Bonds. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, high level without getting into the detail. I think retirement. Yeah. You know, energy and retirement are the two things that I've basically put my bets on. That's your theme in your portfolio. Yeah. Like yeah. Over. What, why is indexed. there no tourism or travel stocks in there, mate? <laughs> I know, yeah, I, I, and I don't want to learn those industries, so yeah. I don't. Um, and then, obviously, what happened with COVID, I'm like, oh, massive steer. Shout clear. out to Tourism Holdings. Yeah, poor bastards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Heartland Bank, because they're digitizing and speeding up uh, technology. So, to be fair, those are the three industries that I'm pretty heavily into. So, mm. uh, Heartland and then Tourism. Oh, sorry, not, not Tourism. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be shorting it almost. Um, uh, and then Healthcare and energy, because I just looked at those and thought, hmm, how have those industries changed with COVID? Well, everyone's still going to need all of that, and I don't think this is going to stop people from aging. Might change some consumer behavior about it, but mm. I'm investing for 30 years, yep, smart. even 10 years, yep. not for uh, 10 days or 30 days. So that's how I'm making my decisions, and... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with those. So I've, I've basically just about got every type of retirement stock you can. Do you? Now, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you've, 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 you've been in the game for much longer than I have. My journey is only a week old. Mm. Uh, the theme of my portfolio at the moment, based on how things are going, is construction yeah, and nice. um, manufacturing with an agricultural bias. Nice. Very hot content. So it, 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 exporters, really. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, that's smart. Yeah. Um, so yeah, investing in yourself, investing in your business, and now let's let's just touch on crypto because it is obviously. I reckon by the time this goes to air, it'll even be more of. Uh, the what famous. do you reckon the price of Bitcoin will be by the time this goes to air? Oh, by the time it goes to air, we'll probably. So get this I out think there. we were uh, last time I looked earlier this morning. Bitcoin was thirty six, thirty seven, thirty seven thousand US dollars. Okay. Um, I reckon previous it, high in the last year, I think, has been forty. Well, this is we're recording this on the what's the date today, mate? Fourth, fourth, the fourth of Fe- of February, and I think we'll get this out by the eighth. I reckon it'll basically be the same. That's pretty boring, isn't it? In in the next week, probably down. Actually, I'll say down. Yeah, I'd probably go with that because thirty five. Uh, yeah. probably thirty. Yeah, I'll go thirty five. Yeah, it'll peg back, and then we'll climb in again, won't we? Yeah, well, yeah, because it'll 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 reach that previous year high of of close to forty, and then the market will go. Oh, we're getting a bit nervous, and it'll peel back again. Yeah, potentially. Fascinating story about Bitcoin, mate. When I was working down in Taranaki, I um I my boss came into my room and he said to me, "Hey, mate, do you know about this Bitcoin stuff?" And I said, oh, mm. "I've sort of been reading about it. My mates are crazed on it, um, but now I'm, I'm I don't know enough about it." And he said, "Well, one of our clients has just said that." has just rung and they've got a Bitcoin and they don't know what to do with it or how to sell it. They got given it when they were touring overseas. And I said, okay, hey. <laughs> on a bus trip. So I rang my mate and said, mate, you're posting about this on Facebook every second day. What's it go? And he said, mate, I'll come down right now. I'll bring the cash down. We'll, we'll take it off and we'll tee it up. Like, give me the number. And they, they rolled up uh, with a stack of cash and they syndicated it between three or four of them, I think, mm-hmm. and handed the money over and did the deal with the, with the client. And uh, I don't know what it was worth then. It might have been close to those original highs, and maybe maybe twenty maybe twenty thousand or something. And client happy days. Like, sweet, got rid of this thing that he wasn't really sure what it was. <laughs> what they, it was. And I think those boys have still got one point four Bitcoin. Uh, well, one of them does individually, and wow. so he's still very in tune with it, and will often drop me commentary and say, "Mate, this is happening." And I've been a bit like, oh, "I'm staying out of this stuff," but admittedly, I did buy some uh, a few months ago. Mm-hmm. Purely because I just wanted the process of learning. Yes. Okay. How does how do you even do it? Yes. Yeah. And That's... that was part of it. And then I thought, well, then I started researching a bit more, and I'm like, look, you know, am I happy to lose this money? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, hey, let's roll the dice and throw it in. For me, this is a gamble, but I have become very interested in the technology and things like that. So to go back to how we got started. I'd just say it'd be much the same as you. I reached out to another accountant that I often see talking about crypto, and I said, hey, mate, I'm going to buy some of this stuff. What do I do? And he said, you've got two options, this one or Easy Crypto. And I Googled Easy Crypto, yep. found it, followed the steps. Then it said I need some sort of wallet. My bloody hell, download this wallet, which we'll talk about more as well. And 
transferred the money. It was all safe. I was a bit nervous. I'm going, yes. oh, is this all happening? And then, lo and behold, I've got some Bitcoin in my wallet. And actually, I started with um, Tether, and then I transferred that into Bitcoin. Transferred? Yeah, yeah. moved it from Tether to Bitcoin. And um, yeah, and now I hold it, and I'm I'm investing on it. I'm, my my uh, gamble, I will say, is that it will 4x. So put 10 grand in, say, I want that yes. to be 40. And if it gets to 40, I'll have a hard conversation with myself of do I take this out? Yes. And probably roll it into something um, something loose. I thought in my head maybe just roll. TAB account? <laughs> nah. I thought Is that maybe, too loose? Nah. Oh, that's too loose. Yeah, I thought maybe like do something real rash. Like just Property. Nah. <laughs> Nah. nah, I thought like well, I just roll forty grand into Facebook marketing and just uh, and just blow some shit up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rash. I've got some. We'll Did talk you about for uh, historical context? Do you know what the first transaction ever conducted with Bitcoin was? Pizza. Yeah, and yeah. do you know how much, how many bitcoins they bought one pizza for? A lot. What was it ten thousand? Oh gosh. No. And in, and, and in uh, US dollars uh, today, that's worth about a hundred and forty million US dollars. Wow. Mm. Wow, fascinating. So for those wondering, well, what are we talking about? You can Google the price of Bitcoin, but if we go back to, let's not get into the real dynamics of Bitcoin and stuff, but if you were wanting to buy crypto, Phil, you recently did the process. I did, yes, yeah, so doing. much the same as you. It was being uh, thrown around a fair bit, and, and Bitcoin, I think, is used as the poster child for crypto broadly. Yeah. And cryptocurrency broadly is the term used for the underlying technology blockchain and i think it's important to understand what blockchain is all about because then you understand what you're actually investing in and i heard it being thrown around and i thought no i need to understand this a little bit more and what really triggered it for me was i read uh of all exciting things um an ird newsletter that came out where they're updating <laughs> reading some tax stuff around the tax treatment of cryptocurrency and one of them was uh, they used the term airdrop and a hard fork and I, was, I loosely recall reading about hard forks earlier in terms of what happenings with crypto but I thought what the hell's an airdrop uh, airdrop turns out to be when you're given it because you're an influencer stay tuned we'll, we'll circle back to that soon but uh, I, I decided to educate myself learn a bit more about um, blockchain technology and how it's gone on its journey to becoming more accepted and then gone, oh, gee, I'll climb in. So, like Luke, I uh, I didn't reach out to anyone. I just found uh, a place I call um, BitPrime, I think it was, based in New Zealand. And much like Sharesies, you transfer money to them, you add some crypto to your basket. So it's like online shopping with Countdown. And give them your wallet address, and the next minute, boom, that crypto's in your wallet. So BitPrime, real easy process. Fill out the, it's uh, probably four steps online. Fill in your name. They've got a link that they email you to your, um, or text you to your phone. You take a photo of your wallet, uh, of your driver's license. Then you've got to take a selfie. It gets all your AML verification done in an instant. It's actually quicker than setting up a Sharesies account. And I found it was a little bit easier and before you know it, boom, you can be transferring cash from your bank account to BitPrime. Easy as. They do take credit card. They do overnight bank transfers. But I used for the first time that Poly. Poly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd never used it before. Didn't you? No, oh, yeah. never. Yeah. And I thought, no, nah, fuck it. I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> and That's the original, isn't it? Yeah, like the, yeah, the OG. I, yeah. yeah, I had no idea. And I thought, uh, I read about it and I thought, no, nah, fuck it. I'm going to give it a go. And sure enough, boom, money sucked out. And then... Same yeah. day, boom, it's in there. And I could go shopping. I was like, shit, speed wins, happy days. Mm. I think Air New Zealand offer that too. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of, I, I have seen it on a number of online shopping platforms. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And I've never yeah. really thought about it because credit card's just convenient, right? Yep. And with the likes of Apple Pay and all of that, your credit card details are saved. So again, it's just reducing that friction um, in doing business. Setting up the BritPyram account, easy as, money's in there, but the next hurdle to overcome was the old wallet. Yeah. You need a digital wallet. So much like your physical wallet holds all of your currency, uh, Luke's got a lot of the, the pink and purple ones in his wallet. Mine has just got mothballs <laughs> and spiderwebs. Uh, you need a place to keep that 
currency, and there are a number of different wallets out there, and some are more popular than others. But the f- the thing I found when going through my little educational journey is not all wallets have the ability to hold all the cryptocurrencies. Okay. Yeah, so I was originally looking at one, I think it might have been called Jax, J-A-X-X or something like that, and one of the cryptocurrencies that I had identified that I wanted to buy did not work on this wallet, so I had to find another one. I ended up settling on this one called Exodus, if you're interested. It looks pretty cool. It's built by some techo dudes. It looks fancy as fuck. And you go in there, the stumbling block there, that was easy to download, installed it on the computer. But from my previous understandings with these wallets is they come up with, what, a 12-word phrase oh, yeah, for security? Yeah. and well, that, that, that was a bit cumbersome trying to get to that point of setting up a password and getting that phrase the other thing i stumbled on was actually finding the wallet address i'm like where the hell do i find my wallet address i thought it was one address for the wallet but it's one address per crypto that you have so if you've got bitcoin you've got one one address if you've got you know your what's that one that you've got that ether ethereum ethereum that's another wallet address I'm on the old uh, Cardano and uh, Stellar Lumens. They're, they've all got separate addresses. You give the address to the BitPrime people, they take your money, they'll convert it into, get it off on the market, deposit it into your wallet, and happy days, away you go. Nice. And I've, I've got been the exact in, same, yeah. Do you have it on your phone? I've only got it on my laptop. What's that? The wallet? Exodus, yeah. Ex- are you yeah. running Exodus as well? Yeah. 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 No, got it on the old phone. Nice. And uh, so I always look at it in US dollars because that's the the international currency that everything's benchmarked against. So then you remove foreign currency fluctuations between the US and the New Zealand dollar. And at the moment, the New Zealand US dollar is at a reasonably high level at about 72, 73 cents, I think. Yeah. And that's because we're doing bloody well. And I think it's going to go even higher because our job data that came out recently is going to support the fact that we're in a blooming good place. Well, anyway, I've had this crypto wallet a week Mm -hmm. and i can tell you i've made uh in excess of a 20 percent gain hey in a week yeah unreal 20 percent. that's better than the housing market (laughs) hey (laughs) that's better than my shares his portfolio gee whiz but i look at that and i go well it's it's I, i look at it and go it's not real yeah because i for me, I don't understand the fundamentals that are driving the price. Mm. What I've looked at with getting into cryptos is the underlying blockchain technology and the problems that it solves. Yeah. And from what I've read and learned is it's becoming the technology. And this is where I think people are captivated by Bitcoin, which is one form of cryptocurrency. But the technology uh, of blockchain is being more widely accepted by the institutions, yeah, banks and, and all that type of thing and as it becomes more widely accepted it's then going to be more widely used and as it becomes more widely used then it's going to drive the price up and the ones that i've invested uh this stellar one and this cardano one i don't really know sweet fuck all about them to be quite honest but from what i did read they are doing an institutional play with uh breaking down some of the friction and trying to get deals done yeah at an institutional level and i thought Speed wins at the end of the day, and if they're going to make shit easier, mm. they they might win. So your this is kind of like a gamble for you. Yeah, just having a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just chuck some money in and, and having a play. I will, I'll throw some more money at it. Yeah, uh, I just for the purposes of this podcast and just my educational journey, I wanted to just chuck a, a, a little bit of dough at it and go right. How does this work? What do I need to learn? How do I get the money out? I know how to get the money out. It's just the reverse of what I did when I put the money in. I will. Uh, do a trade on BitPrime and get my cash back. Yep. Or alternatively, I can go, hey, Luke, mate, what's your wallet address? Send me <laughs> some Bitcoin. Send it over, you know? mate. Uh, and, and We're doing you know, we, 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 can, we, we, we can do an off-market transfer, Transaction, can't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, going back to what we spoke about before in terms of I put money into sharesies because I don't want to leave it in the bank for my rainy day fund, that's something that's being thought about massively by some of these massive companies over in America that have got a stack load of money. Mm. And they are, some of them, going, well, I'm not going to leave this money in the bank. I'm going to put it into Bitcoin, which 
sounds like, wow, that's bloody volatile. Mm. But that is what some of them are doing. Now, if we see that at scale, I mean, you'd assume that the price is only going to go one way, right? But you just can't mm. guess And, and Bitcoin's don't... limited as well. There's only mm. 21 million coins. Yeah. There's eight, eight, about 18 million that are in circulation at the moment. It's going to be fascinating to see what happens with Bitcoin and just with that entire set of technology. I think the technology looks like it's here to stay, doesn't it? And it's got... You know, I think so. I mean, when, when I read stuff from uh, our, uh, our big four counterparts at those franchised accounting firms sending out bulletins around uh, blockchain technology and the IRD talking about it and regulators yeah. that are talking about something that's deregulated, there's got to be something there. There has to be. There, yeah. there has to be. And from what I've read around how it can move manual processes to digital and provide security around getting things done with ease, uh, uh, the, the technology is going to be more widely accepted and people are going to use it. I think it's just mm. gone through an early day phase of real early acceptance where it's gone through the software nerds and people will just look at them of going, gee, they need to get out and get some more sun. <laughs> uh, and now there's it's getting to that next wave of people yeah. that are going, ah, oh, right, it's... Mainstream. Almost. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. becoming a little bit more mainstream. Uh, the other thing that I have learned, so coming back to my comment on the airdrop. Oh, yes. Yeah, I got me old Stellar Lumens, so code XLM, and deposited my little uh, thing, got my coins, and the next minute, uh, I'm getting received. Somebody deposited to my wallet some XLM. Sweet fuck all. It registers as zero value. But I clicked on it, and it's got a... Uh, it, it, it's all very visible. It says who it's from. It's got a transaction ID, and you can click on all the stuff. It all links up, and you can go and see, and you can see how much money's in there or how many coins are in their wallet. Rah, 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 rah. And there's a little message, and it had um, that you can partake in this airdrop and click this link. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, I've been airdropped some coin. I've only just got it. These guys recognize me for the influencer that I am. Happy days. I think, you know, for the coins that I did get, not really reflective of my value that I can bring to the table. But look, it's early days and I'll take it. So I clicked the link and I looked at it and it started asking for some personal details. I'm like, hang on, hang on, hang on. Slow up here, Phil. We're in early days of our educational journey on cryptocurrency. And I dug around a little bit more, and lo and behold, it's a fucking scam. So there's dudes out there that will drop you sweet fuck all of a fraction of a cryptocurrency. If you click through the links and you see a website there to be able to claim your airdrop is what the language is, you fill out a form, you basically give away your information, and presumably I didn't do it. Thankfully, those bastards would take away all of your crypto. Uh, I didn't fall for it. So just Good watch man. out for the, it's. It's surprising that even out there, there's people trying to take advantage. Well, even going back to you know your phone, if you lost your phone that was logged in, or one of the kids had your phone, they could transfer your Bitcoin off there too, eh? and you're gone. Yeah. So you do need to be careful you of that do. sort of stuff. Yep. And also, if you've got a lot of crypto, then I think uh, your Easy Cryptos, etc., will actually encourage you to have a hardware wallet, so you move it off of your computer onto basically like a USB stored hard drive as such for, yep. your, for your cash. So and then you stick it up your bum. Because it is a completely new area of technology. So that means these things are untested and quite scary. So don't lose them. I had, who told me, a mate of mine told me how he went on to sell it. And he went to sell it, but he actually transferred it to another wallet and got got, got it wrong. fuck. And lost it, lost a lot. Yep. Yeah. Ain't getting that shit back. Nah. So, you know, be careful. The other thing is that you can, uh, that I learned with one of my cryptos here, it's called Cardano, code ADA. Uh, I like the logo, to be fair. <laughs> no, Jesus. I'm just, just razzing Let's wrap up. this up. <laughs> no, but you can stake your crypto, which yeah. means you can um, put it out there, and it's like earning interest. So I'm currently staking my Cardano at a current rate of 4.26%. So you're loaning it out. I'm loaning else. it out to some bastard for 30 days at 4%. That's good going. Shit, that's not bad. You are the bank. I am the bank. And in in that time, I've only done it for thirty days. Uh, my, I've had this wallet for seven days. The value of the Cardano uh, Cardano has gone up forty percent. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The what, life, have they, what have they done with the money invested in this property? <laughs> probably. <laughs> to be honest, I don't fucking care. <laughs> so long as I get my return, because the value, I like you stake it, and it's staked for coins, I suppose, for for units of the currency, not as a dollar value. So when mm. I get it back, 
my balance of Cardano is going to go up and the value will actually go up more because if the price continues to keep going up, I win. If the price oh. goes down, well, is what just, it, is. it is what it is. I'll restake it uh, because at 4.26%, that's much better than what I'm getting. That's very good. Bank. I'm sure you'll be declaring that into the, your tax return too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm... I'm your chartered accountant, tax agent, I've got to do shit by the book. Good man. Yeah. Hey, and that's a really good point. <laughs> Sharesies, I don't know about Hatch, but Sharesies definitely give you a year in tax summary. They'll probably email you a link. Make sure you download it and complete your obligations so you stay on the right side of IRD. And if you don't know what your obligations are, do not call us because we don't want to get bogged down. If you're a client, you can. No, but unless you've got property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but my, our last message, uh, we've talked about how to get started into invest, uh, investing. The first question is, or the first answer to that is don't. What's that? Don't. don't. Oh, don't, don't. Don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. What and you you're probably thinking, fuck, you guys have just spoken for 55 minutes about investing and how to get started. And now you're saying, don't do it? Yeah. Well, well done if you've got to 55 minutes <laughs> of listening to all this jibber jabber. But in all seriousness, if you're going to be getting into sharesies, Investing of any type and crypto, you need to be accepting of the fact that you might lose that money. Yeah. And if you owe money on your credit card, don't invest. Pay off the credit card. If you aren't paying your bills on time, don't invest. Get better spending habits or, or, or better habits around paying your bills. If if you've done Luke's Keep the Change program and you understand about trying to minimize your bank transactions and you're still out there frittering away your cash and you're shit with money, don't invest. Address mm. your poor spending habits first and then look at driving your wealth. Lovely stuff, mate. I'm going to leave you with something I read last night online because I was doing a webinar with uh, a KiwiSaver advisor and uh, Mikey, our client, in regards to property, and someone commented and said, it going to crash. It going to crash. So I got that comment and I put it on the screen for all the people watching and I said, I assume this bloke never drives a car. Because someone's going to crash their car today too. So if you have that mindset where you're just driven by fear and you think it's going to crash, it's going to crash, it's going to crash, yep. well, I tell you what, you will be right because eventually it will, just like we saw in March last year. And for me, I've got at least a few crashes to go before I'm going to get to my retirement. So you need to match your investments to your risk profile and to the period of life that you are in. But do not let people that tell you around you, it's going to crash, it's going to crash, it's going to crash, stop you from taking action. Barroom advice. They will be the same people that will slow you down. Now, here's a few things that you won't hear our media talking about that might perk your interest up. But our economy in New Zealand and our country is in a very, very privileged position at the moment as recording this, where we are basically living just like we were prior to COVID. We're all cruising around doing our own thing. Oh, take a moment to be grateful, everyone. How good? How good is that that we can roll around with no masks and other than not being able to travel over to the Gold Coast Mm. or Rarotonga or wherever your fancy destination might be, Las Vegas perhaps, Uh, life's bloody good. Now, if you look at America, they are just printing money and printing money and printing money and devaluing their currency and devaluing their economy and running further and further into the shit. If you listen to smart investors in America, you'll hear a lot of them talking about how you've got to get your money out of America and you've got to invest in overseas entities and countries. Now, New Zealand is an overseas entity and overseas country. That is a good sign that money from the rest of the world is going to end up flowing into our economy because people are seeing us as a great economy that is still moving forward. So, if you want to have a look at that happening in real life, go and take a look at the stock price of Meridian Energy. You will notice that over a very, very short period of time, it just went bang through the roof. Now, that is American money buying up an ETF, an exchange-traded fund, that owns Meridian Energy in that fund. As more people put money into that fund, they needed to buy more of Meridian Energy to maintain their position. Your Meridian share prices just about went through the ceiling. Well, they did. Actually, they doubled in price from only a nine-month period. So those things are going to play out as well. But those are great signs that money is going to end up in our economy. We also have KiwiSaver with people putting money into the stock market every single week Mm. because it's just set on automation now. So keep that in mind too when these people are telling you it's going to crash, it's going to crash and all this stuff because we're living in a completely different time to what these people are judging, you know, these crashes off and things like that. So don't 
not take action purely because some hero wants to tell you that they can see the future because everybody is lying and they don't. So the best way to attack the future is to set up some sort of plan that you're happy with and stay consistent over the long run. Bill, that has been an hour of power. Thank you. What an hour it's been. As always, if you've got value from this, give us a like, give us a review, share it uh, to somebody that could get some value and some benefit from this. If you've got any more questions that have come out of the value bombs that we've delivered today, get in touch, LMP at nextadvisory.nz. And if you take some action, we'd love to hear from you too because we love nothing more than people that actually take action, right? Oh, yeah.